Okay, so let's start uh, with the, our second part of our Santa Cruz. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Again, I'm using Command Plus. And then uh, move the window around by using the space bar and the left mouse. So practice those. Command Plus, Command Minus, or space bar uh, to move the windows around. So again, we're going to put some icons down here to simulate a, um, a tabbed navigational bar for our app. Uh, to do that we're going to use uh, uh, I'm gonna wanna use vector shapes so I know we've been talking about um, uh, in the previous lessons I talked about pixels and if you zoom in of course you'll notice I got you know zoom way in you can see our pixels right our dots 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 so we don't want to use dots we want to make sure that they're uh, sharp crisp and clean and so we use something called vectors which are basically what like what your text looks like here which the computer sees as a mathematical equation and not a series of dots and we tend to do that especially for um, apps because we want our our icons for our apps to be uh, sharp and crisp and clean uh, and so if I was gonna make this a, a, a true app for um, you know that was programmed in the app program like Xcode I would want to use vector shapes for my uh, navigation and so that way it will scale on any iPhone right you want your your shapes or your buttons to to look good on any iPhone or on any Android device so we make uh, vector shapes now for our icons um, we're going to steal them. I know in this class we're going to learn to draw icons and we're going to make our own icons for certain things, but for just learning right now we're going to steal. So let's learn how to steal some icons and put them into our app. To do that, uh, I'm going to use actually the Internet, Illustrator, and Photoshop all combined. So first let's go to the Internet. Uh, the website I'm going to go to is going to be called... Uh, the noun n o u n project p r o j e c t dot com the noun project and this is a great website again I don't have an account and you have to buy some um, icons some are free I don't know I go and I, I basically steal icons from here and uh, again we'll learn to make our own icons but for today for us learning we're going to steal so uh, to find an icon here, I guess our first one is called Home. So again, if you look here, we're going to look at five different icons for this. We want Home, Restaurant, Boardwalk, Fishing, and Beaches. So let's start with the first one, Home, H-O-M-E. And I'm going to hit Return or whatever, Search. And we'll come up with some icons. And I'm going to, you know, I, I like to use kind of abstract looking icons, not too too much detail. Especially, you know, something like this, which has a bunch of lines to it, is not going to look very good, very tiny. If you think about it, that navigational bar at the bottom is, is quite small. So you want to use something that's going to uh, kind of stand out, um, you know, something that's really uh, maybe bold and, and small. That will work good small. I kind of like this one. I, I'm not sure if this is the one I used in my first example. It's either this one or this one, I think. So let's go and take this icon and put it into our app. Now, again, the way to do that is is I could click on it and then I could go and get this icon right here. And they're going to ask me for an account. No, I don't have an account. It says it's a free account. I don't know. I don't even have an account. But let's go and steal it. To steal it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screen grab of it and put it into Illustrator, convert it into an object, and then paste it into Photoshop. Those are the steps. So how do we take a screen grab? And I, I do lots of screen grabs. To do a screen grab, I'm going to use Command Shift 4 on my keyboard. Again, I'm on a Mac. And then I can then go and draw a box around this object. So I'm starting in the upper left. You get a little crosshair right there. And I'm in the upper left corner here. And I'm going to click and hold my mouse down. My left mouse, I'm going to draw a box around this. And you'll hear it'll make a sound. It'll make like a camera sound. And it stores it on my desktop. So it's down there in the corner. And it'll store it on my desktop. Now, if you're on Windows, uh, there is a piece of software called, of course, the Snipping Tool. And if you don't know where a snipping tool is, just go search on your Windows and type in snipping, S-N-I-P-P-I-N, snipping tool. 
and it, it does the same thing. You, I would go find an icon, uh, get to the snipping tool, and draw a box around what you want. So that's how you could do it on Windows using a snipping tool. Next, I'm going to actually go into Illustrator, and if you don't have Illustrator installed, you should install Illustrator and open Illustrator. Now for this, again, we're not going to be drawing in Illustrator, so don't stress. I've never used Illustrator before. Don't stress. It's okay. Um, we're just using Illustrator to convert that, that thing we just stole off the internet to an object that we could use inside of Photoshop. So if I go to Illustrator right now, I'm going to go, and I'm not even going to change anything at all. I just open the program. You don't have to do anything here. I'm just going to go File New in Illustrator. And then uh, I'm going to choose uh, the default letter or whatever it is. So if you don't see it under Print, you're going to go to the first one here. And for Color Mode, though, the only thing I want you to change in this mode, again, Print, Letter, don't worry about that right now, is to change the Color Mode to RGB, right here, RGB, just because we're making things for screens and not printing. So I just change the Color Mode. So don't change anything else. Again, Print, Letter color mode is right here and hit create and it gives you a big window so don't stress about this the only thing we're going to do with this is we're going to bring that image in that we took off the internet and convert it into an object and then copy that and put it into our app okay so here's the steps and I'm, I'm going to do the same steps for all the different icons that you see so the steps would be to put the picture in so to put the picture into my uh, illustrator I go under file place uh, again since I'm using a Mac it put it on the desktop if you're using the snipping tool uh, you, you probably ask you where to save your file on your Windows computer and since it's uh, there I'm going to try and find it it should be called screen capture or screenshot is what it's usually called there and so I go on my desktop and I find my screenshot and I hit the word place and I'm going to draw a box around it. To draw a box, I'm just going to hold the left mouse down and drag a little bit just to make the icon. So I'm going to drag my left mouse a little bit. Boom. It makes an icon. Or not an icon. It makes it the picture. brought the picture in here. So this, it sees as actually a bitmap image, uh, kind of like what you saw in Photoshop. Because when you take a screen capture, uh, it actually converts it into bitmaps here. So, But we want to convert this bitmap into a vector. Uh, to do that, uh, we use something called Image Trace, and if you don't see Image Trace, we're going to go under Window, Image Trace, Window, Image Trace to make sure it's up. And again, it's probably jammed over here in one of the tabs, so if you are just started Illustrator for the first time, it's probably going to show up in one of these tabs over here. So it's probably jammed away over here, just like in Photoshop to move windows around you could put your cursor over the name, the word right there. I'm going to put my cursor over the image tracing. I'm going to hold the left mouse down and drag it out. Again, it's called image trace. Next, uh, what we want to do in this image trace is we want to open up uh, uh, um, the little advanced option that's towards the bottom right here. There's like a little arrow. And if we click on the left mouse to open that up, it's going to open that up. The one thing we want to make sure we check inside this image trace pop-up window is the one where it says ignore white right here. I don't know why they don't have that on default, but they don't. It's called ignore white. So again, the settings for that, uh, I'm not going to change pretty much. I'm going to leave default. Is It's going to be black and white image trace. Again, black and white. Uh, ignore white. And I'm going to hit trace. There's a box for trace. And so it's just converted this into a vector, but it, it's not quite ready yet for Photoshop. In order to get it ready for Photoshop, I need to, to do what's called uh, expand. To expand this, this will convert this into basic objects. To do the expand is underneath object expand. And while I'm doing that, it'll then convert it into a normal objects, and I'm going to hit OK. And so now it is a vector shape that I can use in Photoshop. But the problem is it's black. So I want to make this actually white before I do that. Uh, whenever we use uh, Illustrator, it's actually objects. So these are just basically mathematical objects. And we want to color them. You'll notice in the toolbar over here, there is a uh, black icon right here. I'm going to double click on that little black swatch right here. 
and I'm going to bring up the color picker. It's the same color picker that you saw before inside of uh, Photoshop. And if I click on the very top, the, the, you see there's there's a big color window here. And I'm going to choose the very, very top white right here. And I'm going to hit OK. Now, my thing looks invisible, but it's really not. It's just because it's white object on a white background. So the last thing we need to do is put this into Photoshop. To do that, we're just going to copy and paste. If you remember before, uh, you can either hold Command C on the keyboard to copy, or we can go under Edit Copy here under Edit Copy, and again Edit Copy. Now I'm going to jump back to Photoshop. It should still be running with my things in it, and I haven't even saved yet, have I? I'm going to go back to Photoshop. Okay, here's my Santa Cruz thing. In fact, maybe we should save before we even paste in case something crashes and we get crazy. So let's actually let's save this before we even paste that in there. Let's go under File Save As. And let's just give it a name, Santa Cruz, Santa, oosh, Santa Cruz app. How about that? And leave it as a Photoshop file, and I'm just going to save it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I saved it. Hopefully you know how to save a file. Uh, in the Photoshop format, it's fine. So next, uh, we're going to paste that icon that we copied from Illustrator. To paste is under Command V, or uh, you can go under Edit Paste as well. And it's going to ask us how you want to paste. I'm going to paste it as what we call a smart object. And the reason why I'm going to paste it as smart object is so that, that Photoshop still sees it as a vector. So I'm going to click on where it says smart object and say, and not add it to my current library. I don't want it to be in my library the rest of my life. And so then I'm going to hit OK and you'll see it makes a little icon again use the move tool here and move it on down to the bottom down there and that's a pretty good size maybe a little big and again you still have uh, scaling options here so you can scale it a little bit if you want again click on the move tool and you got a nice little house here okay uh, let's uh, pause this for just a second and we'll make a couple more Okay, let me uh, do one more, uh, and then you can make the rest of the icons. Again, I'm going to do the same steps. Again, the next one, uh, I believe, was restaurant. So I'm going to go to the Internet. Remember the noun project? I'm going to type in restaurant, R-E-S-T, rest, A-R-U-A-N-T, restaurant. Is that restaurant? No, restaurant. How do you spell restaurant? Oosh. Put these backwards, don't I? You are restaurant. Okay, so you get some more. Uh, again, I'm looking for more solid looking things and not sort of uh, shapes. I don't like the house kind of thing. You know, we have a nice solid. I think I use this as an example. This is maybe. Uh, I don't know. But find something you think uh, will work. Make sure your icons kind of all work together. So you want to find ones that are similar to what you've um, already done. Uh, I think I like this one before I'm gonna go with this one and then I'm going to hold on the command shift 4 again uh, you could use the snipping tool on Windows or command shift 4 and I'm gonna draw a box takes the picture of it puts it on my desktop I'm gonna go back to Illustrator again I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna put this house maybe over here a little bit just to get it out of the way uh, to bring it, it's still there, it's just invisible because it's white on white. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is bring this in by going under File, Place, and I'm going to go to my desktop, and there's my uh, restaurant icon. Again, I'm going to use Place, and I'm going to draw a box, try and make it about the same size. That looks pretty good. Uh, again, we're going to use something called the Image Trace option here. And again, in the image trace, I want to click on where it says ignore white here in the advanced. And I'm going to hit trace. Now, in order to <coughs> make this editable, we're going to use something called the um, uh, expand. So under object, we're going to go to where it says expand. And just hit the default and hit OK. Boom. It's now an object, just like we had before. And then just like before, I'm going to fill it with a white to do fill it with white. I'm going to go over to the color swatch that is right here, and I'm going to double click on it. 
and I'm going to choose the white that's at the very top up here and I'm going to hit OK and it makes it white and now we're going to copy and paste again I'm going to hit command C on the keyboard and I'm going to go back to uh, my uh, Photoshop file and I'm going to paste it over here by using uh, edit paste and again I'm going to use smart object and I'm not going to add to my library and I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to put it down to board so you can drag it and then scale it if you want and uh, maybe put it next to the other one and hit the move tool and then uh, go find uh, three more and put them in and then we will go and add some text below each one so go and add the other ones uh, yourself okay now that I've had uh, I went and copied and pasted uh, three more icons in there and I put them in to where they should be along the bottom there and uh, next thing I want to do is make sure I name my layers so uh, again these are just called vector smart objects because we just copied and pasted from uh, from Illustrator so if you click on the on the words twice here on it uh, highlight it you can call it home um, then this one is uh, restaurant and then this one is uh, boardwalk and then this one is fishing and then this one is uh, beach okay so we have uh, different icons for each one again you make sure you name your layers so you'll notice in Photoshop you're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of layers of doing things so let's put in some text again I'm gonna use the text tool that I used before uh, this time I'm going to make sure it's centered, uh, alignment is centered. I'm going to use a small size, maybe around 48 pixels. I use the same Arial regular that I did before. And I'm going to kind of click right underneath my icon here. And I'm going to type in home. Um, then I'm going to use the move tool once I'm done typing in my text and kind of align it. Uh, that's kind of big and maybe I'll use lowercase letters I'm thinking I'm going to use that so I'm going to go back to my text tool I'm going to put my cursor at the very end and I'm going to highlight it and let me use lowercase letters there we go I like that a little bit better and it's a little big so I'm going to change the size down a little bit there we go it doesn't need to be so big so now we got there I'm going to zoom in a little bit by hitting command plus so again type in some text and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the option key down. I'm going to duplicate this text. If you remember before uh, using the move tool and uh, make sure you have show control with controls. Uh, I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to put it right underneath this one. I use the text tool and let's call it restaurant. Uh, R a U N T is that restaurant? I keep spelling it wrong. I cannot spell that word. A R U A N T is that restaurant? R U A N T. I don't know why I can't spell that word. Rest A U R N. I don't know why I keep mixing these two letters up. U R restaurant. Okay. Uh, again, then I'm going to uh, duplicate this text by holding down the option, click and drag. And this is going to be oh, option, click and drag. Uh, and let's call that boardwalk. B O A R D W walk. And then we got fishing, so line that up a little bit. This text might be a little big. It would be nice if we made smaller text, maybe. Uh, next, I'm going to use on uh, this one, and we'll call it fishing. And then the last one will be uh, beach. And we'll call it beach. So, uh, boy, that's about it, actually. We've pretty much finished. You've made uh, your first kind of uh, app looking thing. You might need to move things around so that they're nice and aligned. These aren't quite aligned beautifully down here. And that might be a little big. You might need to change the size. And remember, the move tool changes size. But save it as a Photoshop file and uh, um, turn it in.
this is all I wanted to show you as far as uh, using all the you know, interface design uh, concepts here.